This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where personal spiritual growth is fueled through a variety of practices rather than a single prescriptive time of devotion, where we discuss different spiritual practices that help us be more present with God, others, and ourselves. What's going on, practitioners? What up? How we doing? How we doing? I'm doing okay. I got a nice vodka tonic here, or a vodka soda here. Yep. Um, it's a nice summer refreshing kind of thing. Yeah, so for anybody wondering, it is currently 10.15. In the, in the evening. <laughs> yeah, in the evening. Not in the morning. Like, we're pretty tired and we were like, hey, a cocktail might be nice. Yeah, a little highball. Yeah. It's always a nice way to end the day. Yeah, so... Went downstairs after recording Let's Talk and made us a little cocktail and coming up here to talk about praying the scriptures. Which is, is super cool. Um, I don't know. I, I used to do this a lot. What? Praying scripture. Um, I used to do this a lot. Um, but um, there was a book. I can't remember who wrote it, but you remember that book that dad gave us praying the Bible? Yes. Did you ever read it all the way through? I did. It's a little bitty book. I wouldn't yeah. even call it a book. It's more like a booklet. Yeah, it's more of a booklet. It was like 60 pages or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I read it in like an hour. Yeah. Um, I never read it all the way through, but I remember thinking like, yo, this is some good stuff. Yeah, that stuff, that's not unique to him. No. There are a couple of things in there that are unique to him, but by and large, praying the scriptures is a like an ancient thing we've done mm. forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what the Psalms were. Yeah. They were prayers and songs. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been doing it forever. Yeah. And then like even Jesus, right? He tells us when you pray, pray this way, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So I do kind of, just because I just read the quote, it has nothing to do with praying scripture, but I love it. By Richard Rohr. Oh, I, I read that quote. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with praying scripture, but, but it's, it's a so great, good. it's a great quote. For Jesus, prayer seems to be a matter of waiting in love, returning to love, trusting that love is the bottom stream of real of reality. Yeah, I love that. No, it's a great quote. It just has nothing to do with praying scripture. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, maybe in a sense, like. That it has to do with prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, or like praying the Lord's Prayer or something like that. Right. Like, Which kind of is praying scripture, but it's also not because Jesus just says, this is how you should pray. When when you pray, pray in like this, this way. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. So what is praying scripture? Well, there's a few things. Um, as we mentioned, like the Psalms. Mm-hmm. I regularly pray Psalm 23. Mm-hmm. I regularly pray Psalm 51. Like, I regularly play, pray, I think it's Psalm 63. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of Psalms that I don't have my, actu- I don't have my devotion Bible with me. I have my preaching Bible with me. So I don't know exact, I don't have all my bookmarks and stuff. But, yeah, 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 it's Psalm 63. Uh, oh, God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Mm. Like I pray that all the time. I regularly pray because it's in my liturgy for mm. praying for my yeah. uh, uh, fixed hour prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Psalm 119, your word is a, is a lamp to my path. Or the acrostic psalm. Feet. Yep, I regularly pray that. I also pray Psalm 121 a lot. I lift my eyes up to the hills, Mm, right? Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of things like that. And a lot of times people don't realize, well, to to some extent, and I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. It's not actually praying scripture, but it's very adjacent to this idea 
Have you ever been like in a place where like you walk in and there's a ton of people praying, like went to a prayer meeting and you walk in, there's a ton of people praying and like right when you cross the threshold, you just like feel the presence of the Lord. Oh yeah. What's the first thing you want to do? Pray. Oh, okay. I want to take my shoes off. Oh, because it feels like holy ground. It's holy ground. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not really praying in scripture, but like scripture has influenced me in that way. Mm. And it's the way in which I pray. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a traditionalist kind of thing, right? Like, yeah. uh, kind of liturgical in the sense, like this is holy ground. Let me take yeah. my shoes off. But like, um, it, that is influenced by scripture. So in a yeah. way, yeah, I, I kind of get what you mean. Now there are like, so you can go in scripture and find places that are actually prayers. Yeah. Like the Psalms. Yep. Right. And you can find in the Psalms, you can find a prayer for no matter how you're feeling. Oh, that's absolutely true. Like <laughs> yeah. David's all over the place. Moses got some <laughs> crap in there. Solomon's got some crap in there. Like there's some wild, there's prayers. some stuff. We don't know who wrote it, but like, well, and there's some prayers in there where David's like, God, I want you to kill these people. Kill them. <laughs> take, take their name out of the book of life. Like, yeah. Heinous things. And it's like, you can find a prayer for anything you're feeling. Yep. I know people that pray the prayer of Moses, the mm -hmm. prayer of Jabez. I know people that pray like Paul's prayers. Like we were, I've got Philippians open right now. I pray that I used to, I, we talked about that before. I used to pray that all the time. Yeah. Paul's got a whole prayer in here. He's like, I thank my God every time I remember you constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel. I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way for all of you sharing God's grace for God is my witness. And this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Yep. Like, you can go through and point, like, to each of these moments where you find prayers, and you can pray those prayers. Yep. Like, there's nothing that says you can't pray somebody else's prayer. Mm -mm. Literally, it never says that. Well, I mean... We've been doing it for, for thousands of years. years. Yeah. Right. Like we have been doing it for so long. Just uh, Judeo Christianity as a tradition. We've been doing it for so yeah. long. Yep. Why all of a sudden do we as evangelicals think that we have to pray spontaneously all the time when we have prayers written for us to pray? Yeah. Right. Like, in scripture. I would, yeah, agree 100%. It, it's a very strange thing. But the book that you referenced, which once again, I wish I could remember who wrote that book. I'm going to look it up. Okay, while Clayton's looking it up, the book that Clayton referenced, what that guy's trying to do is not so much convince you that you need to be praying scripture. Mm, he's trying to tell you how to do it. He's trying to tell you how to do it. And the thing that's unique about him is he actually thinks you can apply this to any text. Sorry, him and her, Stacy and Wesley Campbell. Let me see. Mm, yep, that is the book. Um, husband and wife, I guess. I guess so. Yeah, but one of them's like a professor at like a seminary. Yeah, he, I don't know which one it I, is. Yeah, I don't know if it's the man oh. or the woman. Well, no, I do know because he's a like this person is a seminary professor at Southern, so it's definitely the man. Oh wait, hold on. This says Donald Whitney. Clayton doesn't know what he's talking about. Look at this. Well, no, this no, on Amazon says uh, it, but Google says... Who brought this guy? <laughs> All right, final, final, final decision right here. I'll tell you. I'm pulling it up on Amazon. I'll just look at the book cover. Yeah, I, I don't know why you didn't just do Donald that. Whitney. Yeah, yeah, Donald Whitney. Donald Whitney. I and apologize. He's a professor at, at Southern, isn't he? Yeah, Southern Baptist Theological. Yeah, the the Southern Baptist. The Southern Seminary. Baptist Theological Seminary. Oh, my gosh. The Ohio State University. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the Baylor University. 
nonsense. Sorry, I've got a cold. Y'all are going to have to bear with me. Nobody asked you if it was the. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> he is dying over there. It's so funny. Because <laughs> if you ask somebody where they went and they went to Southern, oh, they're like, I the, went to, I, the went, I went to the Southern, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. No, you didn't. Like you went to Southern Baptist. Like yeah, that, that's yeah. where you went. the. Uh, it's just another seminary. Chill out. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is a very unique seminary. It is also, well, no, I can't really say that. It's not prestigious. It's not prestigious. There are some circles of which it is prestigious. There are some people that have come out of it that are prestigious. I would agree with that as well, but there are some circles where Southern is like the premier seminary to go to. If if you come from a more reform Baptist, reform circles, Baptist tradition, because you can't yeah. you can't go to Fuller anymore. No, and they don't really want you going to Princeton because they think Princeton's too liberal. Mm-hmm. So it's really Southern, or what is that? Westminster John Knox. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that's the other one you could, or Calvin Coolidge. Oh, I forgot about Calvin Coolidge. Yeah. yeah like, Anyways, we're on a rant about we, seminaries. Yeah, we. Yeah, I could talk about seminaries for days, but so what Whitney's trying to do in this book is he's trying to convince you and show you how to pray scripture no matter what you read. Mm-hmm. So when you sit down and read whatever you're reading. So if there's time, I'll show you how to do this both from an epistle and from a narrative. Um, but like, um, I don't know. Let, let's look. All right, I got Philippians 1 open up here. Oh, wait, that's the prayer. Uh, okay, let's just do Philippians 2 right here, okay? If then there's any encouragement in Christ, that's Philippians 2 verse 1 part A. I'm like, okay, if then there's any encouragement in Christ, I'm going to stop and pray this for a minute. Yeah. Do I ha- do I have encouragement in Christ? Yeah, I do. I do. So let me pray about the things, like let me acknowledge the things I have encouragement in Christ for. Like I have encouragement in Christ that he's God of restoration. I have encouragement in Christ that there's redemption. I have encouragement in Christ of sacrifice and love and selflessness and and all these things. But yep. yeah, those exist. If then there's any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, do I have experiences of consolation of love? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to take mm-hmm. some time and pray about those. Any sharing in the spirit. If you're spending any time in community, you should have some things of sharing in the spirit. Mm-hmm. If you're spending any time with the Lord, you should have some things of sharing in the spirit. Any compassion and sympathy, like, do those exist? Yeah, they do. I I acknowledge that. Verse 2, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. So I'm spending some time praying for unity. I'm going to pray this prayer over myself. Lord, make me to be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind with those around me. Yeah. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Lord, help me be selfless. I'm going to take some time and pray about my selfishness. Yeah. I'm going to take some time and pray about my con- cons- consention? Conceit? Con- consension. Con- conceitedness. No, I don't think that's... A, I think it's <laughs> consension. I don't know. But... But in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. So I'm going to like spend some time praying here, like for selflessness, for that this life's not about me, that Lord, make me, mold me into you to be a person of selfless, of sacrifice. Verse four, let each of you look not to your own interests, yeah, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. There's nothing about that that's unique to prayer. No. But all of those things I can turn into a prayer. Yeah. Because, once again, Scripture's written for us, not to us. In the same way, if you've listened to our series on the Bible, on Pines and Perspectives, like, the Bible is inspired by God. Like these things are things that we need to hold very near and dear to our heart. 100%. 
And so as such, like this, like where else better to get prayers from? Absolutely. Now I'm not saying like, don't hear me. We pray the hours around here a lot. We do liturgical prayers. We do written prayers. Like we're, we're not saying those things are bad, but think about it though. Lots of those things are doing this, right? They're pulling principles they from are. the Bible. They are. Yes. And including it into a prayer, right? They so, are. A lot of these written liturgical prayers are this. That is true. Um, and, and how many times have you been through a devotional, and at the end it has that little prayer. And it's just like scripture. It, they're doing this. Yeah. Right? They're taking the scripture that they had you read, and then, you know, that their little um, uh, exposition of that, of that yep. passage, and then they turn it into a prayer. Yep. Right? Like, that is... 99% of devotionals. 100%. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. 100% agreed, but not 100%, 100% agreed. Yes. Yeah. Not 100% of devotionals. Correct. Um, that is most of them out there, though. Yeah. Because every moment holy, um, I don't know if you would call them a devotional. I don't know what else I would call them. Spiritual formation resource. I don't know. They, they don't always do that. Ah. They actually have some things that are not like, just praying the scriptures. They're just like totally original or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, or like different exercises and stuff. Talking about this flashback, like a deep cut memory. Mm. Back at Super Summer. Yeah. <laughs> that is not. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Super Summer is a camp done by one of our partner organizations, one of our state, like our denominations. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say anything other than like, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan. Me either, as an adult. Um, I don't think that I would want to send our students there, but I had a lot of good memories from yeah. there. Um, however, there was always dedicated time for prayer. I don't know, it was like 20 minutes or something like that, dedicated yeah, That's at every decent camp, Clayton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no I know. Supernova. But like, I started doing it at Super Summer. Oh, got you, okay. And then I kind of took it with me to every other camp, right? But got you. Um, I, I got so sick of like trying to come up with spontaneous prayers because I couldn't do it for 20 minutes. So you know what I did? I opened to the Psalms, Psalms. And, and started like rewording them. Yep. And some of the most powerful prayers I've ever prayed in my life. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I remember one of the first times that like I really did this and like it hit me. Like it was very clear to me was Psalm 63. Mm. It was, it was when I had my prayer partner and like we were, we were praying, but like, I just felt like, and remember we were spending a lot of time in prayer. Yeah. Several hours a day yeah. in prayer. And I just remember thinking like, I felt like there was a, like a block like between me and God, like me and God were vibing and like one day I just felt like there was a barrier there yeah. and I couldn't like, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get through it. I spent like 45 minutes trying to get through and like, I, I never got peace about it. And like I could, I just really felt like I couldn't get through and I just turned around and opened my Bible, like looking for some kind of inspiration or whatever. And this is one of the situations where I do actually recommend like, Maybe just open your Bible. Mm. It fell to Psalm 63. Mm. And so I picked it up and I started praying. And I'm going to read you the first few verses of Psalm 63 because they are powerful when you're in a moment where you're trying to seek the Lord and like you just feel like you can't get through. It's good stuff. This is what it says. Oh, God. Uh, oh, sorry. And this is a Psalm of David when he's in the wilderness of Judah. Mm -hmm. So like once again, David in the wilderness, like looking for God, God doesn't seem to be near in like, a literally desolate place. Yes. The wilder wilderness and desolate are the same word. Yeah. Like it's literally a deserted. There's nothing there. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. 
So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for jackals. Mm. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. David, in a very like dark place, spiritually. Well, and physically, too. And physically, yeah. Spends a ton of time just praying about his need for God. Mm -hmm. And in praying about his need for God, you can feel the, the tension in his words. Yeah. Like this urgency of longing and desire. But he devotes himself first to this moment of like, God, I'm looking for you. Yeah. And then when I find you, I'm going to ask for just a little bit for me. Hey, my enemies, like, I need you to take care of them. But, like, first and foremost, I'm looking for you. That's one That's one thing I love about praying the scriptures. One of the most powerful things I think is we can treat God as a genie in a bottle. Praying the scriptures reminds us that God's not a genie in a bottle. He's a God who loves us and is worthy of worship and praise. And it's in those moments of worship and praise that we find the love and grace of the God that we're looking for.